Hey everybody, here to talk a little bit about Skyrim today, um, specifically the uh, legendary difficulty. Uh, I've seen a lot of debate over uh, the quote unquote best starting class and everyone has an opinion. This being an RPG where you're playing the role of your hero, you know, and who you want your hero to be and how you want them to be in the world that they're in, and this is a big living, breathing world that they created in Skyrim. Um, that being a main factor, everyone's going to have their own individual thing, because, you know, everyone's an individual. You know, each, each person has their own taste and what they like. Some people want to play the wicked, mean character hated by everybody, the, the rebel who wins at all costs, uh, a la Mass Effect or Dragon Age, and then, you know, you, you have the other ones who want to be loved by all, you know, the big, glorious, you know, light-emitting hero, whatever, you know, and you can do all that in here. Um, best starting class is the one you would have the most fun with, is the bottom line answer to that. Um, in all the debates I've seen, all the videos I've watched, and by no means could I watch all of them, there's got to be thousands, they seem, they're seemingly endless. Um, the one overriding factor which kind of squashes all of it is the fact that by the time you're level 10 or 15, which is relatively early in the game, it's about the time of your first dragon battle. And some people, you know, wait till they're level 15 or 20 for that, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, go to Riverwood, go to Whiterun, then go, you know, to Bleak Falls, and then go beat up the dragon. You know, your first one, get your first shout, and then you can start spawning dragons, and to me that's where you bring the meat of the game in. Uh, giving you access to these shouts, because you could go earn 30 shouts, but you, if you don't have any Dragon Souls, you can't use them. Uh, so, you know, by level 10 or 15, your, your starting racial abilities with each race kind of come out in the wash. Um, you can find replacements for those. Go find the Standing Stone that gives you the same perk. Um, what you would call birth signs, I guess, in Oblivion. You know, now you just got these things scattered around the world, and you can, you know, change when you want. That's really cool. It gives you a lot of liberty and freedom to just switch it up in the middle if you're not happy with what you're doing. And that's another thing. If you start with something uh, that you don't like, you can you can switch. Especially now with the DLC, you can even, uh, you know, reset skill perks. They basically raise the level cap infinite. You know. Uh, with or without that, regardless, you know, as long as you say, okay, I want to run around with my sword and a shield, so you've got that basic skills, all the rest of the stuff is just kind of floating, you know, choose what you want to do. So I would say the most important thing is um, how you want your character to look, appearance, uh, it's a big deal to me, and if you're one of those that can just take a default character and you couldn't care less, then who do you want your character to be in the... Uh, uh, politics, religion, and the society that they created in the Elder Scrolls. You know, each race fits in in a certain way. You have bigotry and hatreds and alliances and, uh, you know, if you're a Nord at, at home with the Nords, most of the Nords will treat you friendly and, you know, if you're a Dark Elf or an Argonian, they'll treat you like vermin. You know, there's a lot of bigotry and stuff there. And, I, you know, it's I, not a whole lot different than real life as far as that goes. You know, they've created this living, breathing world with all the dynamics. Uh, if you want to learn history, politics, and religion here, they, they set books that you can read on every shelf, you know, and stuff like that. So how do you want to fit in like that? If I want magic resistance, it doesn't necessarily mean I have to be a Breton. I can eventually enchant my armor to get the exact same magic resistance cap, which I believe caps off at 85%. Even if you have 200% resistance, it's still only going to be 85% regardless. I, I don't think they... Uh, so much let you be invincible in every way, such as you could in Oblivion in a lot of ways, you know, where you uh, reflect all magic, reflect all attacks, you know, things like that. Um, and here, you know, you're, you're still going to be a little weak to things, but with the enchanting you can do to a ring, a necklace, your armor, your gloves, your boots, and your helmets, uh, not to mention the stuff you can throw on your weapons for offense, you know, you can, uh, you can be a real war horse, you know, as far as that goes. So. Regardless of starting race, by the time you're level 10 or 15, um, you can be what you want to be in this game. They set it up like that. So my uh, first factor is how do you want to look, who do you want to be, you know, as far as how do you want to fit into the world of Skyrim. And the second one being uh, character height, which is something you obviously can't change in, in the game. And uh, how that's relevant is that the taller your character is, the faster they move. Just just, you know, their base movement speed, whether you're uh, sneaking, walking, or sprinting, is going to be faster the taller you are. Altmer are the tallest, orcs are second tallest, the Nords are the third tallest, and the uh, Argonians, Dark Elves, um, Imperials, Khajiits, and the Red Guards are right there in the middle. The uh, male Wood Elves and the Bretons are the shortest. 
Um, they'll, you know, you take a Brenton and a, and a Altmer side by side, and the Altmer is going to win a foot race every time. Um, cover the same amount of distance, a good, you know, I whatever, 20% faster or whatever. I don't know the exact numbers. Anyway, uh, even that can be modified later in the game. You know, you get that one standing stone blessing. I think it's like the speed or something. Anyway, it allows you to move faster, carry more weight, and you, like your heavy armor weighs nothing or something like that. Anyway, you've got stuff scattered around the world that allows you to modify your character. So if there's something you wish you had, but you just don't want to play that character, well, whatever they have, you can find later on for the character you want to play. So even that, I, you know, really just, that really doesn't matter. Um, one might want to look at, especially on higher difficulties, Master or Legendary, which I'm fixing to start Legendary here, um, starting skills. One would argue, well, if, you, if you're like a Nord or an Orc or Red Guard or whatever, if you're a quote-unquote warrior race, warrior class, you'll start with a higher one-arm skill or you'll start with a higher two-handed skill or light or heavy armor skill or some combination thereof with blocking. You know, just basic warrior governed skills and um, me personally, and I get this from Oblivion, because this is how I leveled in Oblivion, I'd rather start with the lowest possible number in any given skill, even if you start out weaker and you have a harder time. i got to hit you three times instead of two times type of thing. Um, that gives me more experience as I level up uh, that particular skill that I'm using. If I start out with a one-handed skill of 15, I can level it up 85 times towards my experience. Whereas if I start with a one-handed skill of 25 or 30, uh, if I'm one of the warrior races, then I can only level it up, uh, what, 65 times, you know, 70 times at the most. And so I look at that and I say the skills that, I, that I'm going to use the most, whereas I love to dual wield uh, and I like archery, the Breton start with a base 15 in archery and one-handed. And I don't believe they start with any armor skills either. So if I'm running around with light armor, which is what I like, uh, Steel weapons, all I use, you know, just grab a couple steel swords. With steel smithing and good enchanting, you can create steel weapons that will uh, eventually, even on master difficulty, from sneak, almost one-shot dragons, you know. And that's without using any exploits or anything else. It's just utilizing, you know, your enchanting techniques, your careful use of potions, and enchanting your right equipment, and, you know, doing what you need to do, getting all your skills up there. You know, so you, you can work around all that stuff. Um... So I would say my, my two cents in that whole thing is, who do you want to be? How do you want to look? And factor in movement speed somewhat to your race, but don't let it dictate your selection because you can change even that later. Bottom line is, is how exactly, you know, do you want your character to be a reflection of yourself or some shadow you, you know, that represents, you know, your deep, dark, you know, hidden self. Like, this is my evil twin that goes through and, you know, murders her. You can do what you want in the game. And that's, that's the beauty of this, you know, the liberty that you have in that. So that's, that's my two cents on the arguing. I'm going to get into character creation here in a second in another video, but my memory card's about full, so I'm going to go ahead and end this one now. Anyway, thanks, guys. Talk to you later.